the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars and afternoon host at 1010 XL, Frank Frangi. I think you're one of the first guys I ever interviewed. Perhaps Jimmy Himes had me talk to you to yeah. see how it would do because you guys are good friends. One of my one of my dear friends in the business. In fact, I'm the one that we both were newspaper guys. I left. And I talked him into leaving. So I'm I'm responsible for him going into that radio thing for all those years. Uh, the first year they had this year was '85. My first year here was '88. The first year there was live radio at the SEC was '89, and our show in Jackson was the first show to ever go live from the SEC media. By '90, the WJOX, the Birmingham station, was going live. And by 91, there were 30 of us. So um, so we were the first show to ever go live from SEC Media Day. So I've been doing this up a long time, Dave, for sure. Yeah, it's it's been a while, but but you're only like 48, right? Um, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, but I started when I was about 12. So, a... <laughs> so he'll give you the best preview of Florida who, yes, Tennessee plays in Gainesville in September. So let's go ahead and, and get into that. This time last year, we were talking about Billy Napier, and if I heard the term detail-oriented yeah. one more time last year, I thought I was going to get physically ill. Um, is is that still kind of the MO, detail-oriented, or what did you see last year that yeah. may make you have questions, if at all? Well, I think Florida was broken. Dan Mullen didn't recruit anybody. He was a very good football coach, but wasn't much of a recruiter. So Billy Napier went in there and had to rebuild everything. That's why that detail mattered, Dave, and I think there's something to that. He had to go in there and rebuild the facilities, rebuild the, infra, the, the infrastructure of the recruiting base. The way Kirby Smart does it, the way Nick Saban does it, the way these successful schools do it, they have gigantic staffs. They get to every player, and I think he had to build that, and I think he's doing that. It's going to take a while. Uh, they were playing last year with defensive players who don't look like they belong in the SEC. Florida's never had that. Even – even in the bad years, Florida's been good on defense. They were lousy last year because he had to go find some players. So they're more athletic than they've been. So I think he's going to build that thing. There's two questions. Number one, is he a good coach? We don't know. He was a pretty good coach at Louisiana for a few years. We don't know if he's a good game day coach and a developer. We hope he is. But I don't know that. My gut tells me he probably is. We haven't seen it. The other thing is, in this day and age of immediacy, and fans can't wait to fire the coach, they're going to win what? Six or seven games this year, probably. The over and under is five and a half. They may get to six or seven. Next year, they're probably playing a freshman quarterback. So it's another seven or eight win season. Will, will he be able to get to year four having not won nine games in any season? You should be able to. But the question is, will they let him? Will the fans? Can Scott Strickland hold off the social media folks and all the loud folks and, and the noise in the system? And can he, can he hold that off long enough? to where Billy Napier gets to coach all these recruits when they're juniors and seniors. So I think he's the right guy to do it. Uh, it's going to take a while. We'll see if he's given the time to do it. That's the question. How is the NIL collective yeah. initiative in Gainesville better than it was 365 days ago and not even that long with the Jaden Rashada blow up? Well, it's better because how could it be worse? It was a disaster. It was comical. It was, it was an embarrassment to all of them down there. They know that. They now have this thing called Florida Victorious. That's their new collective. They say it's way better. They, I don't know enough about how the NIL works and uh, what you're allowed to offer, what you can't offer, what you should offer. Uh, I do know that – so I don't know. I'm, I'm far from an expert on that. What I do know is they feel better about it. They now feel – they blew it. They Not just the Rashada thing. They didn't have NIL figured out. And they, they, they believe they're closer to having it figured out. This Florida Victorious thing, this brand-new NIL, this brand-new collective, I should say, they feel like they've got the right one again. I – We'll see. I think we're all trying to sort our way through that. That's why the commissioner, Greg Sankey, here in Nashville this week was so outspoken about how Congress has to get involved and we have to have the same rules for everybody, no matter what the NCA wants to do and no matter what the state governments want to do. And until that happens, everyone's going to try and sort their way through NIL. I don't think anybody's got to figure it out. As far as Florida and what they have coming back, I feel like with Anthony Richardson last year, let's start with offense. They were kind of figuring out what he did well. They didn't have enough time to probably figure yeah. that out because he had such upside the NFL had to have him. What do you think of them offensively this year? Well, I think uh, you're going to see a lot of Anthony Richardson and Joe Milton when you guys watch Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He can throw it from here to Gatlinburg. He can run 100 miles an hour. He can jump over tall buildings. But can he hit the easy throws, play in and play out, play in and play out? Anthony Richardson could do all that. 
He could run forever. He could throw it a mile. He could jump. He's an athlete. And he was a great kid. He was a hard worker. He's a good guy. All the things that I hear Joe Milton is. But what he couldn't do is complete the seven yard out 10 times out of 10. Because that's what you have to do. You have to complete that seven yard out. You can't miss the easy throw. You have to hit the swing pass 100 out of 100. And that's what he couldn't do. And so uh, and so I think that's what, what held, held them back. This year, they got this guy, Graham Mertz from Wisconsin. Nobody knows. He looks like to me the guy that's going to hit the swing pass 100 out of 100, but doesn't have a real strong arm. Isn't going to make a lot of plays above the X's and O's. So I think he'll be steady. It's no uh, no no secret what they want to do. They've got two really good backs. Montreal Johnson and Trevor Etienne are two really good running backs. They want to run it. They want to try and play better defense, and they want to run it, and they want to get to the fourth quarter 17-13. That's what they want to do. Last year, even when Anthony was playing well, they played from behind. The Tennessee game is a perfect example. They were in that Tennessee game the whole game. The game ended when they threw an incomplete Hail Mary at the end of the game. Well, Tennessee was way better in Florida. But but Anthony Richardson played above the X's and O's enough. He made great plays against Tennessee, which kept them in the game. And so I don't think you'll see that this year. I don't think Graham Mertz is going to single-handedly keep them in a game. But hopefully he doesn't have to score 45. They're going to try and play defense. They're going to try and run the ball. He's probably going to be game manager. No quarterback wants to hear that they're the game manager, but I think he's going to be that guy. And I think that's how they're going to try and play. So flipping to the defense, you're talking about Florida didn't have the players last year, and you're absolutely right. That's usually not a one-year fix, right? That's right. And it's it's, it's more of a one-year fix than it's ever been because of the portal. True. But it's not a one-year fix. You're exactly right. They've got two guys they really like, Cameron Jackson from Memphis, a transfer, Caleb Banks, a transfer from Louisville, who they think will be good players on the defensive front. They'll be better athletically defensively. But you're right, Dave, it's young guys. So, again, the over and under is five and a half wins for Florida. When has that ever happened? When has Florida ever been an irrelevant team? You know, this is a team that, that I mean, is has ran through the league in the 90s, has won three national championships in the last – 20 some odd years it's been a great program that is really down i think they'll be better defensively day they're not gonna be great they're not gonna be great on either side of the ball they're uh, my guess is they're gonna win the gimmies uh my guess is they're not gonna beat georgia they're not gonna beat lsu i don't think they're gonna beat utah i don't think they're gonna beat tennessee although the tennessee games there and they tend to play well against tennessee and gainesville but tennessee's better than them and i think georgia and lsu and utah clearly are so let's say that's four long fsu let's say there's four or five losses they're gonna have Okay. Mm-hmm. If they win the other ones, they get the seven wins. I think that's a good year. I hate to say that seven and five is a good year for Florida. We've never felt that way before. But I think if you lose to the teams that are better than you, that means they've got to beat South Carolina and Kentucky and Missouri. And they may not be better than those teams. If they don't, they win four games. So I think that's the kind of season they're going to have. I want to ask you kind of a little bit because you are the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've seen Trevor Lawrence have better success under a better coach, but also just that relationship, hopefully symbiotic relationship between coach and player, because it particularly pertains to Tennessee, because you got a Hendon Hooker, it didn't work out at Virginia Tech, you got a Joe Milton, it didn't work out at Michigan. How important do you believe, big picture, is that relationship, especially if it's an offensive coach and a quarterback? Well, there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, the the big picture from 10,000 feet where you're going and you're dead on. The coach and the quarterback have to be on – the head coach and the quarterback have to be aligned. They have to work together well. They have to kind of like each other. They have to be able to play well together. We saw the incredible example of that two years in a row in Jacksonville. Urban Meyer didn't connect with Trevor. He just – they just didn't. He was hard on him. Uh, he, he, they didn't connect. And Urban wasn't a very good NFL coach for all his college success. He really wasn't. He was a little overmatched at that level. I think everybody would agree with that. And here's Trevor Porkhead, first year in the league. Saw that. Doug Peterson is as good a quarterback coach and as good a guy as I've ever seen. I've gotten to know Doug well. He's a down-to-earth guy. He's very real. He's genuine. And, and he created a winning culture and a good culture. And I think the players could feel that day. And I think that's one of the things that served them well. And it really benefited Trevor. Who knows where Trevor Lawrence is in? He made their man. I can't wait to call the next seven years of games, not just this year. So, and I think that's real important. Tennessee's situation to me is different. Number one, Josh Heupel, by all accounts, is a great guy. On top of being a good coach, he's a really good dude. Secondly, much like Spurrier, he had an offense that defenses can't practice against because nobody could replicate. The reason Florida was so good in the 90s, they were doing stuff nobody else was doing. So it's hard to replicate it. I think Josh Heupel, because of the speed with which they play, they run to the line. They don't substitute. There's not a lot of motion. It's boom, 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 boom. It's hard for defenses to replicate that, and so you can't practice against it. So 
And Hendon Hooker knew that so well. He knew exactly how to run it. Can Joe Milton run that offense the way Hendon Hooker can? He's got a great – he'll have a great relationship. By all accounts, Joe's supposed to be a really good guy. I know Josh is a good guy. I think they'll have a great relationship. The question I have for Tennessee is that's not an easy offense to run. Can anybody run it? I don't know. You probably know better than I do about that, but I don't know. But but to your big to your larger point, the coach and the quarterback have to be on the same page. And I think it's one of the things that'll make Josh Heupel really good because I think he will connect with just about anybody that's playing for him. If you had a better mortgage payment, Billy Napier will do one if the fell miserably. He will build up Florida, but not win at a championship level, or he will win yeah. at a championship level. That's you got to pick one of those three. What have to be? I don't think he'll fail miserably. Um, two and three are close. Two and three are close. I'm going to say three, but I'm I'm guessing. I'm also a Florida guy, so I'm a little biased on that. But I, I think I think he's the right guy. I think I think they've had enough failure; they'll be patient. I think there's some Kirby Smart and Dabo in there. I don't know if there's any Nick in there yet, but he strikes me when I talk to him. I've talked to Kirby a bunch. I've talked to Dabo a bunch. I think there's some of that in there. He relates to kids. He relates to boosters. He's a regular guy. If you ever got to know Kirby Smart away from it, he's a regular guy that you'd love to play golf with or have a beer with. Same with Dabo. I think Billy's like that. Now, is he as good a coach? I really think right now what is about now is getting players. That doesn't mean coaching doesn't matter. Of course it matters. But, Dave, there's so much good coaching now. There's no bad coaches anymore. They're, you know, they, they all they all know. They're, 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 there's good coaches now. Can you get those fours and fives? I think it's more important than it's ever been. So I think he will get that. I don't think he'll fail miserably. But can he build it up but not coach it? Can he build it up but not have enough time to coach it? That's a good question. I'm going to I'm gonna take three only because you maybe take one of the two. Um, but I think that's the question. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him. I really am. Gotcha. Frank Frangie loved visiting with him. 1010 XL and also the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coverage continues of SEC Media Days in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs>